Hi, I'm Glyn Dewis. Welcome to episode 25. And this week, I'm going to show you how you can create special lighting effects and reflections using the Color Dodge Blend Mode in Photoshop. Okay, so the lighting effect I wanna show you in this short video is the one that I've actually been asked about quite a bit since posting this recent picture of mine of Iron Man up online. And the, the effect is this one here where you can see this blue light spilling out from this, uh, I think it's arc reactor, all over his body armor, and also where it's on his hands. And this warm light, which is the same, um, same technique, this warm light here going down either side of his body because of the fire in the background. It's a very, very simple technique and one that you'll be able to use on many, many pictures. So let's just dive over then to a part retouched version of the Iron Man. Now you'll also see this body arm has got lots of dents and scratches. I've done a video on that already on my YouTube channel so definitely make sure you check that one out. So how do we do this light then? I'm not going to show you how we turn the arc reactor light on itself. We're just going to look at that blue spilling light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all then create a blank layer and I'll rename that to blue because the light source that I'm going to put onto it is going to be that nice blue. Then I'm gonna come over to my uh, toolbar, click on the foreground color, which is, a, the moment is black, and I wanna choose a blue color. Now when we come into the, the color picker here, we've got two areas that need to concentrate on. We've got this multicolored wheel here, which is kind of like the color wheel, but it's been stretched out. And I wanna choose a blue, so I'm gonna click on the slider and bring it into the blue area around about here. And now I'm going to go into this square. Now with this square we can have the disc and this little disc will dictate what kind of a blue, of a blue we're having. Now you'll notice we have this, two, this little section here where it says current and new. The current color is the one that your foreground color is at the moment and the one above it is the one that you're now choosing. So you'll see as I move this disc around you'll see that new area there keeps changing in real time to tell me the color I'm now going to be selecting. Also, when you're in the color picker, once you've chosen the kind of like range of color that you want, like at the moment I've chosen blues, we can now change that blue. We can go to the left to desaturate it even. We can go to the right to saturate it. We can even drag upwards to brighten it or drag down to darken it. And again, as I was doing that, you'll be able to see that new area here interacting in real time to show you the color that I'm picking. But the one I want for this light spill, I'm just gonna drag the disc right over to the right hand side and put it kind of like in the middle-ish kind of area. I don't have to be too accurate at the moment because I can change it later. Then I'm gonna click OK. I'm then gonna get a brush, nice soft edge brush, so make sure the hardness is at zero, and I'll also make sure there's no settings in here. I want it to be a normal brush with no fancy effects being applied to it. And all I'll do now then is just paint around the area here where I want that kind of light spill to be occurring from the arc reactor just spilling out onto the front of his body armor. Now, obviously at the moment, it doesn't look realistic, but what I can do now then, because this is on its own layer, is come over to the layers panel and change the blend mode of this layer from normal to color dodge. And this is when the magic happens. Straight away, we start to see this kind of like electric, really powerful kind of light, realistic I think as well, coming out from the arc reactor. So we go from normal beforehand, clearly not realistic, to then change it to color dodge to really make it look, look realistic. Now we can take it one stage further. This would do you. This you actually, you could say at this point, yeah, that looks pretty good, and then carry on doing more. But you wanna make sure that when you're doing the retouching, it's the small details, the small things that you pay attention to that make the bigger impact on the overall picture. And what I mean by that is, let's just say that this was real. Let's say that Iron Man was real, the arc reactor was really on, and it was coming out and lighting up. The light was spilling out onto his body armor. Now this body armor, because it's got dents and it's kind of like um, got an arch to it. There's different tones in there. There's bright parts and dark parts. Now at the moment, all we've done is we've laid down a color and we've changed the blend mode. So it kind of looks very uniform in brightness all the way around it. In reality, had this really been hitting the body armor, it would react differently to the darker parts and the brighter parts of the body armor. So we can kind of simulate that by coming over to the layer now where it contains our blue color. And where I wrote blue, where we've got the layer name, if I 
double click on that to bring up the layer style, we can then go to this area at the bottom here, the blend if area. It's an area within Photoshop that people tend to avoid because it's kind of confusing. You don't try and get an idea, your head around how it works. But once you start using it, you'll never want to stop because it really can change the look of your pictures and just take them to that next level. All I want to do then is I want darker parts of the uh, image which is below the blue layer to come through this light to make it look a bit more realistic. So all I'm going to do is we've got two sliders, this layer which is the blue layer, an underlying layer is basically anything underneath it, i.e. our Iron Man. Now if I click on this, this is the dark parts, this sort of part over here is the dark areas. If I just click and drag on that, sure enough the darker parts will start to come through. However, the way it's done that it doesn't blend in very realistic, especially if you look down here. It looks very noisy and it's very, very kind of like obvious that I've, something's been done. For, for realism, what we can do is we can hold down our Alt or Option key, click on this little triangle and it splits into two. So now I can then start to separate them to bring through the darks, but the blending, how it blends between the darks and lights is much, much more realistic. So I'm going to go to somewhere like that. You might not see any difference at the moment until I start turning off the preview on and off. So that's before and that's after. Before and after. It's not a massive difference, but it is a difference. And like I said, it's the small things that make the difference in your pictures when you're doing your researching. So we'll click OK. Now what also I want to do is just uh, add a bit more blue into the inner circle here because that's the area really, really close to the arc reactor and that would be a lot more blue, a lot more kind of an electric feel to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another blank layer. I'm going to keep to the same blue and I'll change the blend mode of this layer to uh, Color Dodge. And then all I'll do is I'm going to paint within that area. So you can see it's now painting in the Color Dodge blend mode something like that but that to me still doesn't look realistic I really I would have chosen a brighter blue from my color picker but it can be difficult to choose the right kind of blue but it doesn't matter because now what I can do I'm going to go to my image adjustments and I'm going to go to hue and saturation so now I can use the lightness slider to decide whether I wanted that blue to be brighter or darker. Now the brighter I make that blue, the way that reacts with the color dodge, it becomes a lot more powerful, a lot more vibrant and electric looking. So if I bring it over a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, now I turn it on and off, the difference that makes is a lot more realistic because this area within this circle would be so much brighter because it's so much closer to that light source within the arc reactor. And we'll click OK. So that's basically all I did. I'll just work my way around now, added a blank layer, changed the blend mode to color dodge. Let's just go to full screen now by double clicking on the hand tool. And then I just painted him with that same blue where I thought some of the blue light would be spilling off from his hands onto his body armor and also maybe a little bit more off the arc reactor. Now I didn't also paint in the same 100% opacity over his body armor. What I did was use pressure sensitivity. Now I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet which has pressure sensitivity built into it. But rather than me going into the brush presets and manually turning it on and off, when we're using a brush, at the top of the screen you've got these icons where it says opacity and 100%. There's this little disc here with like a pen on it. If I click that down, that has now activated pressure sensitivity. So what that basically means is, as I press down really lightly, it just adds a little bit of blue. But if I press harder, it adds more blue down. So I'm pressing down quite hard now and I want a little bit less, so I'll just, just press down not quite so hard on my tablet. And when I finish with that, I can just then turn that off by clicking on that icon. So it's a very, very quick way of actually accessing the pressure sensitivity. Now, one last thing. Obviously, I've added in the fire. That then would have also been shining onto the body armor. So it's the same process. Let's just put all these blue lights into a group. Top one is selected. Hold down my shift key. Click on the bottom one so they're all selected. And then we'll go to the fly out menu at the top right of the layers panel. New group from layers. And we'll call that blue. And now we'll just add in how or show you how I did the, uh, the way the, the light from the fire was actually hitting onto his body armor. So another blank layer and we'll call this fire. Change the blend mode to color dodge. So it's exactly the same process. 
I'm going to go to my foreground color here, click on it to get the color picker. I'll keep the disk in this big square in exactly the same place, but then I'll use this slider here to choose a suitable kind of color here. We'll come down here to this kind of orange area, somewhere around about there will be fine. Click OK, go back to my brush now, and in fact I will turn on that pressure sensitivity again. So we'll click, and then all I did was just paint very, very gently down the side of his body armor. Now the bits right to the edges of his body armor, right near to the fire, they're gonna get it a lot stronger. So as I'm painting, I'm gonna press down even harder now, and it lays down even more of that where it would be really, really bright near to the fire. So press quite, quite hard down here. Let's come underneath his arm, add a little bit onto there as well, like so. And I'm just pressing down nice and soft now just to bring a bit of that light further into his body armor, like so. And I worked away around the picture, adding it in, pressing down nice and soft onto his fore, onto his head, and other parts of the body armor as well, certainly on his other arm. And pressing down quite hard on the underside here to lay down quite a bit of that brightness and then nice and soft onto his hands, something like that. Now, if that light source, again, isn't bright enough for you because it's gonna be really close to the fire, like you can see in the final image here, again, I can go to Image, Adjustments, and Hue and Saturation, go to the Lightness slider, and then brighten up there, bring it over to the right-hand side so you really do start to put some punch into that brightness on the side of the picture, something like that. And then we'll click OK. And that's all there was to it. Just to show you how you can use the Color Dodge Blend Mode to add in light reflections. It's a very, very powerful blend mode that you can use, like I said, in almost any picture where you want to add in light sources. So that is exactly what I did for the background as well. The background itself, these clouds, has got dark and bright parts, literally chose a blank layer, choose a nice orange and paint across that background and it just gave me that fire kind of look where the background was darker it had the orange effect. Where it was brighter, it turned into a much brighter yellowy kind of orange color as well. So it gave me that, by accident to be honest with you, gave me the look of fire. So there you go, just a very, very quick demo of what you can do and what I did do on my Iron Man picture with the Color Dodge Blend Mode. Okay, so thanks for checking out the episode. I hope you like the content there. There's so many special effects that you can do with the Color Dodge Blend Mode. I know of a wedding photographer who's using that exact same technique on photos of the hands with the ring on there when they've got a colored stone. Just using it to add just a little bit of a reflection off the stone onto the hand totally lifts the picture. But listen, if there's anything else that you'd like to see, uh, techniques from the Iron Man picture there, drop me a line. Leave a comment in the comment section below there of anything that you think you'd like to see, and I'll see if I can put it in. But in the meantime, make sure you click on the subscribe button if you haven't already done so, so that you don't miss out on any videos. And also, like I've said before, I'd really appreciate it if you could share this video, or in fact my YouTube channel, with anybody that you know might like to see the free content that I push out each and every single week. But for now, until next time, I'll see you soon.